Good evening, everyone. We're just going to be beginning uh, the event in exactly a minute. Uh, please go ahead and put yourselves on mute and switch off your camera so it does not interfere with the quality of the event. Thank you. All right. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us for this amazing event uh, on a Friday evening. I know uh, it's a Friday evening and you guys probably could be anywhere else, but you're choosing to spend your time with us. So thank you again. Uh, for those of you who are new to this community, uh, I do want to spend a minute talking about who we are. We are Products by Women, a diverse global community for women in innovation and tech, uh, where women can all over the world can connect with peers get matched with mentors and find jobs beyond borders. Uh, we've dropped some resources in the chat box, so feel free to connect with us uh, and stay connected. Um, before we begin, I do want to share some quick housekeeping tips. So, you know, for the for really good quality throughout the event, please do keep yourselves on mute and switch off your camera so it does not interfere with the quality of the event. Uh, feel free to drop your questions at any point uh, in the chat box and uh, we will be answering them and taking them at the end of the session. Uh, a recording of the event will be shared uh, with you all via email uh, and on Slack. We'll be dropping it on Slack, so please do connect with us there. Uh, and if uh, we do not get to your questions, again, Meghna will be joining us on Slack, so you can all either connect with her uh, on LinkedIn or on Slack or, uh, you know, or via Instagram or any other social uh, that she'll be sharing with us. And uh, with that, uh, I'd like to introduce uh, Meghna. Um, hi, Meghna. Hi, Anisha. How are you? Uh, good. Uh, I'd like to pass it on to you and uh, feel free to take it from here. Perfect. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Thank you very much for joining in. I hope everyone's doing well and staying safe. My name is Meghna Saikia, and in this session, we will try and understand the role of a business analyst in the world of product management. As Namisha mentioned, I will go over my presentation first, and after that, we will open the floor for question and answers. Please feel free to keep adding your questions in the chat box, and we will go through them one by one after the presentation. So to begin with, uh, Naimisha wanted me to start off by describing my journey to everyone so that all of you can get an insight about my career path. All right, so I graduated in software engineering from New Delhi, India in the year 2008, which if you all remember was exactly when the last global recession happened. So it was an interesting time to start my career to say the very least. If I look back, I think that it has definitely given me the perspective that tough times like these will eventually pass. Well, so after I graduated in 2008, I started working as a software engineer at Accenture in Bangalore, India. Here, I started working on building different software applications using programming languages and other software development concepts that I learned in my education. So in short, I was being the practitioner of what I studied in school. I worked in Accenture for three years, and in this time, I realized that even though I loved technology, I definitely enjoyed the business side of it much more. I thought programming was fun, but I was absolutely drawn towards understanding the bigger picture of what and why are we building something? How is it bringing a business value? How is it transforming a business? I'm a people person and I would say it is one of my strengths. So talking to my clients, stakeholders and users, understanding their pain points, coming up with a solution to help them out, um, leveraging technology as my background was something I really wanted to do. So I decided to make a career move. I started with a pivot into an analyst role where I took up more work into analyzing systems, data, business processes, and figuring out technical solutions to optimize systems and applications. 
in this role and in the process of figuring out what I enjoyed working on, I realized that my hunch to be closer to the business side was right and that I should move into a full-fledged business analyst role. So I moved to another company called Larson & Tubro Infotech, also called LTI, in a business analyst position. I also moved, made a move from India to France with this company in 2011. It was very interesting interacting with users and clients, especially in a new country with different culture, language, and a completely different landscape altogether. It was quite unsettling at first, but I was able to pick up fast, things fast uh, with the support of amazing colleagues and friends that I had there. Overall, I would say that this was a very unique and wonderful experience for me, and I definitely learned a lot there. Then in 2013, LTI, my then company, gave me an offer to move to the United States to help them with projects in their North America's divisions, based on all the experience that I gained, gained in Europe. So I packed my bags and uh, moved to New York and started working with huge insurance and financial organizations as my clients and helping them out with, my, with their needs. Few years later, in 2018, I moved to Synecron, which is a technology and consulting company that specializes in capital markets and insurance. I currently work here as a senior manager for business analysis. In the span of these 12 years in my career, I have had extensive experience and have dabbled in everything from product management to business analysis, consulting to strategy. So if you see my journey, I started out with a just-in-case mindset where I went to school for software engineering, not really knowing what I would like to work on in the future. Hence, I gave myself the broad spectrum of knowledge to be able to start my career. Next, I decided to work as a software engineer because it was the logical next step. But once I actually started working in the industry and got to the real grounds, I had to figure out what aspects did I really enjoy working with. Here, I had to change my mindset from uh, a just-in-case to a just-in-time mindset in order to learn real-time things that would fit into what I really want to pursue further. So that pretty much sums up my journey. Let me show if we can move to the next slide, please. Thank you. So that, that was my journey. And now let's dive into the session and talk about who is a business analyst. So in the simplest terms, business analyst is an agent of change in any organization. It could be building something new that the users or the organization needs or it could be improving an existing product or a process. Anytime a change is needed, business analyst is the person you go to to make the change actually happen. A BA is also someone who has the skills to bridge the gap between business and technology teams. What this means is a BA understands the organization's business model, their product, process, and overall strategy. They also have a certain degree of proficiency and expertise in the business domain that the company operates in. So it could be insurance, finance, manufacturing, anything. Now, when I mention bridging the gap with technology teams, it does not mean that the BA needs to be an engineer or needs to know how to code. However, it does mean that they should understand technology to a level where they are able to get a solution implemented from their teams and engineers based on the requirements defined. Now let's move on to what a business analyst does. Again, in simple layman terms, business analysts help define what the user needs and the rationale behind the change. There are a lot of times clients and users don't really know what they need, not because they're confused, well, they could be, but because they think they want one thing, but when we dig deeper with the requirement session, we may find out that they actually need a completely different thing altogether. A simple example that I normally use to explain my teams is a user can say that they need a car, for example. 
But a good business analyst knows that when you dig deeper into this requirement and the pain points of the user, you may probably find out that the real requirement was actually not to have a car, but just to be able to get from point A to point B. That was the actual need. And now that the BA knows this, they can facilitate a solution and figure out if the real solution is to actually build them a car, or maybe is it to find out a direct train route, or maybe carpool with someone. There are numerous solutions that can be provided there. So the first part, as you can see, was focusing on what is needed by the user, and the second part is how we can achieve it. So the what and how, how of it is extremely important. All right, um, next I wanted to talk about the ambiguity when someone says the term business analyst. So does it mean the same thing as a data analyst or a system analyst? What is the difference or is there even a difference there? So let me start off by saying that business analyst roles can vary widely and you will find conflicting definitions of a BA role in different job descriptions when you apply for jobs. Or perhaps even amongst different employees with the same job title with an organization. In smaller organizations, these positions may actually be the same and the term business analyst becomes the broad title for a job that may involve data or system analysis as well. But in organizations where these roles are well-defined, typically what we see is that the system analyst role focuses more on the technology aspect of the solution you wouldn't normally see a system analyst on just a business process change. They usually come in when there is a software change and they're probably going to go a couple of layers deeper than a BA into the software requirements. Not really focusing much on how the product needs to function from an end user perspective, which the BA does, but, they, but the system analyst mainly is looking into how the software is built or configured, how multiple systems are going to work together to meet a specific functional requirement. So that is the difference between a BA and an SA role. Uh, as for a data analyst, it may again seem very similar to a BA role as good business analysts generally tend to possess strong foundational data skills. However, data analysts obviously need much more advanced skills here as they work more directly with data itself. Also, BAs will have more direct interactions with users and customers than a data analyst who may consult initially with the internal SMEs to identify important data sets, but the bulk of their work is generally done independently. Majority of their time is spent looking at data and creating reports that show what insights are hiding within the data. While they do present their findings to the different teams eventually, they tend to work more in silo than their BA counterparts. So depending on the organization, many business analysts may end up actually performing the role of a system analyst or a data analyst or a combination of all of them. Nothing wrong in that, but my recommendation would be that when you apply for a BA role, make sure it matches your expectations and what the organization's core focus or perspective is. For example, is it data driven or processes driven, etc. So it's important to figure that out before applying for jobs. All right, I think we can move to the next slide, uh, Nanisha. Thank you. Okay, so let's move on to understanding the relationship between business analysis and product management. Both the both streams are collaborative, not really competitive. So there are a lot of similarities between the roles of a product manager and a business analyst. They both require some sort of, some sort of same skill sets. In smaller companies or startups, you may even see that they have their BAs themselves act as product owners or product managers. Or maybe the PM is doing all the BA activities. Whereas in larger organizations, they may have well-defined specialized roles performed by two different individuals or teams. So in the companies where they have BA and PM roles defined as two different roles, uh, they are made to be extremely collaborative roles. Both roles have to work hand in hand in building a successful product. Besides the very long list of similarities, if I really have to generalize in order to bring out a difference between the two roles, I would say product managers typically are outward facing uh, in that they look at the market and interact with customers to assess product opportunities. 
And business analysts are typically inward facing and focus their efforts inside the company at requirements of products, processes, systems, and facilitate how to best build and support what the product manager is requesting on behalf of the customers and the market. Again, as I mentioned, there are exceptions to these. And in my career, I have seen both kinds of exceptions. I have seen inward facing PMs who are more focused on efforts within the organization, as well as outward facing BAs who are involved in the vision and strategy of the product and they do customer interviews, user journeys, etc. So it really depends on how your organization is structured. So let me try to give some examples of how BAs and PMs support each other in product development life cycle. So PMs normally own the product vision and the roadmap. They ask questions like, what direction are we taking this product to? What are the customers asking? And do those requests align with our strategic initiatives? Why are we building this feature right now, et cetera? So they also take care of finding the most urgent problem to fix and help prioritizing what new feature should be built next. Uh, they also have typically have a budgetary decision-making power. Again, we can have exceptions there. Uh, within the Scrum framework, product manager is the owner of the black backlog and performs backlog prioritization. But this is done generally in collaboration with business analysts. In the scenarios where BA is the acting product owner, um, BA would be the person managing the backlog and setting the prioritization after talking to stakeholders, which may include a PM in some cases. So in either of the cases, irrespective of who the owner of the backlog is, BA and PM have to really be in sync and work on backlog management collaboratively. So depending on the organization structure, uh, the user story writing itself can really be done by either of the two roles. Typically what I see is if there are two separate roles defined, then the PM will maybe add shell user stories in the backlog and the BA would probably define and elicit the details of the requirement for the engineers to understand what is needed to be built. Unless of course the product manager is hands-on and understands technology, then they can write stories as well. Um, coming to refinement sessions and grooming sessions, uh, typically I see BAs will run these sessions and help answer questions that the engineers might have by collaborating with the product managers, of course, and uh, making sure the requirements are understood and well-defined so that the software team can build against those requirements. But again, but again, I have seen product managers do this activity in many organizations as well. So again, it's a, depending on, um, there is no hard and fast rule here, but it depends on the individuals involved, their skill sets, how your organization has defined roles, et cetera. So a question that I get asked often is, can you transition between the two roles? And the answer is absolutely yes. Companies hiring for product managers want to find someone who have some sort of a business analysis background or have dabbled in BA activities. So they are able to talk to different cross-functional teams, build requirements, do the design, et cetera. Having a good understanding of how to run sprints, build frame wireframes and how to write stories or a requirement document are very practical skills that companies want you to have in order to enter a product manager role. If you're a BA wanting to move to a PM role, I would suggest look at how you can present your business analysis projects, see how you can train them to demonstrate your product management skills. If your organization follows Agile and Scrum frameworks, then taking on product owner roles on internal projects, um, that can often be a good place to get familiarized with most of the aspects of product management. So if we can move to the next slide, please. Thank you. So now let's talk about how does one become a business analyst? I have listed down uh, most commonly asked questions here, but if you have any other than these, please feel free to add it to the chat and I will respond to them towards the end of the session. So the first question is, um, are there any specific certifications required to become a business analyst? So IIBA, which is the Interna International Institute of Business Analysis, they provide three types of core BA certifications. 
First is ECBA, Entry Certificate and Business Analysis. This is normally for folks who want to enter the industry. It could be fresh graduates who want to become BAs or someone who wants to pivot from their current role into business analysis. Second is CCBA, Certification of Capability in Business Analysis. Uh, this is more for the BA professionals who have two to three years of experience uh, of practical BA related work experience. And the third one is CBAP, Certified Business Analysis Professional. This is more for seasoned BA professionals who have at least five years of practical BA work experience. So in my personal opinion, uh, none of these certifications are really a mandatory requirement to become a BA. I have never not hired someone just because they don't have a ECBA or CBAP certification. I personally do not have any of these certifications and I don't think I have faced any issues because of this. However, if you are someone who's completely brand new to the world of business analysis, this will definitely help you grasp certain concepts and help you perform certain activities with much more confidence once you get the job. So I would recommend this to someone who's brand new. Even if you don't get certified, reading through the coursework helps you. But for someone who's already familiar with the industry, it's not really a mandatory requirement, but it's more of a good to have for them. Next question I get asked is Agile certifications. So I personally think this is important. Again, you don't have to be certified, but if you don't have practical Agile experience, I would suggest you to look at courses on Udemy or Coursera, because these are practical skills that get used in BA or PM roles. Um, I think companies definitely prefer people who have Agile work experience or certifications to prove the same. I personally do have um, Agile and Scrum certifications. Um, I'm certified Scrum Master and certified Scrum, Scrum Product Owner. I feel it does add credibility when you are training clients or team members at work. All right, the next question I do get asked is, do you need industry domain knowledge to become a BA? Well, in most cases, I would say yes. A BA does need to have certain proficiency in, or understanding of the business domain that the company operates in. Because if you have to do requirement gathering or elicitation, it is definitely important to have a background to understand what your stakeholders and customers are talking about. So typically people who want to move fresh into BA roles start by exploring in the industry that they already have experience in. Could be finance, insurance, etc. Next question is, do you need an MBA degree to be, become a BA? So the answer is no, you, you don't need an MBA. If you have one, great, but it's definitely not a requirement at all. Uh, the last question is, uh, do you need a degree in technology or consulting to become a BA? So this is a very interesting question because I get this asked a lot. So uh, as I mentioned in my journey slide, I do have a degree in technology and I have worked as a software engineer and a consultant. However, I don't think it's a mandatory skill needed to become a PA. Uh, you don't need to know, as I said, how to code or understand technical architectures. However, a basic understanding of technology, data skills, logical analysis skills, to the level where you can facilitate a solution from engineering teams um, is what is expected from a PA. Uh, okay, can we move to the next slide, please? Thank you. Okay, so the next slide, I want to give everyone an idea about the career paths for a business analyst. So as you can see, the possibilities are endless. If you want to follow a traditional career ladder, it would probably look like this. You may start as an entry level BA, then move to a mid level BA to a senior BA or a BA manager who is managing other business analysts. Um, from there, you can move to either a director position or a practice lead or a head of product line. These people are mostly responsible for establishing the processes for business analysis activities in an organization and of course managing their BA teams. So at this level, it really doesn't, it really depends on how the organization has structured their hierarchy and what kind of positions they have. And eventually when you move to C level positions, this this could be matched to a chief product officer or a chief operations officer, or some companies also have a chief digital officers these days. You can also make lateral moves to many other roles and career paths, depending on your interest. 
So product manager is an obvious one, as we saw a couple of slides back. Uh, data analyst, system analyst, again, we talked about this, the similarities are numerous and uh, with a focus on specific aspect like data or systems. So if that is what interests you, so those, those are easy transition roles, I would say. Consultant is another obvious one. Data scientist is a really good one if you are interested in that field or have the aptitude for it. Um, as you know, data scientists are very much in demand these days and it definitely has a bright future and longevity according to me. Uh, another relatively new position that I see organizations starting to have is an enterprise business architect. Uh, their primary responsibility is to understand and provide uh, the strategic direction for an organization. Um, they research on new ideas, initiatives, and the organization may want to pursue and make recommendations on what projects um, should be pursued further based on a cost benefit analysis and feasibility of specific solutions. This work is generally considered pre-project because a go-no-go -go decision has not been made yet. So that covers the career paths of a business analyst. Um, next slide, please. So, all right, that brings us to the end of this presentation. Um, thank you so much for being a part of this. I would love for us to connect. So please feel free to connect with me directly on LinkedIn or email me. My information is on the screen. Um, I would be more than happy to help you in your journey and hopefully we can find ways to collaborate as well. So I believe we have time for questions now. Um, let's go over these uh, and let me show over to you. Yeah. Thank you so much, Meghna. That was uh, really, really insightful. And I think uh, a lot of people here will have questions. Uh, and so I just wanted to mention to any, everybody here, uh, if you do have a question, please drop it in the chat box, but to begin and kick off our Q&A. Uh, Meghna, I think the first question that I do have in mind is that you come from an engineering background, right? And you pivoted into business, uh, into being a business analyst. Uh, so what are some steps you actively took to go and like pursue this path? And what interested you about this? Oh, so the strategy that usually works for me for pivoting into uh, different roles um, is that uh, to start picking up the kind of work and responsibilities of the role that I want in future, in addition to the current role that I have. So that way, people in your organization will start seeing you in that role and you become an obvious choice. At the same time, you learn skills that make you prepare for success uh, when you actually get the future role. And I think most importantly, it gives you an insight and clarity if you enjoy that kind of work and role, and if this is the path where you want to proceed with. So um, that's what I did with uh, from software engineer, then I tried out analyst, and then I, try, I, I realized that, okay, I like this, and I can move to a business analyst role. So that's, that's normally my strategy, um, even for future roles, that's, that's normally what I do. Awesome, thank you. So we have a question here from Pradeepti uh, asking us like, can you elaborate on the career transition from being a BA to a data scientist as, uh, as in the skills required? Uh, what are some skills, certifications, resources? Do you have any insights on that? So uh, data, obviously I'm not a data scientist, so I'm not the right person to answer it, but um, you, what I'm trying to say is that the, the aptitude and the analysis skills um, is very similar. You will have to probably go deeper into uh, data related uh, certifications and um, gain skills for that so, so that you can transition into a data scientist. Uh, mm -hmm. But the s skill sets are very much similar. Awesome, thank you. And you, know, you mentioned that you actually moved so many different countries, right? From India to France to the US. So, how do you think that has helped you to being the business analyst you are today? And how did you make that transition happen? How did you get this entire global exposure? Like, was it a planned move? Did it just come your way? How, or were you, did you keep your ears and eyes open? Like, how did it all come into place? Yeah, it looks like planned, right? But <laughs> it's not planned. Um, so um, I think the, ex the global exposure has really helped me understand the different work cultures people have and the pain points of users all over the world. It, it has definitely given me a perspective uh, which, which has helped me in growing um, into my roles that I've taken up. Uh, how I made those moves, um, I think networking is key here. 
every job or uh, career move that I've made has been possible because of networking. So it is important to expand your networking circle within your organization and outside of it and generally connect with people and see how you can help each other out. So I know we cannot have in-person networking events in quarantine time how we used to earlier, but I would say we can definitely try and change our perspective and look at the positives. Like we don't have to commute to get to a networking event. We just have to log on to a Zoom session from the comfort of our house and do virtual coffees or attend sessions like these. So the fact that you all are here tonight is a step in the right direction. And I would encourage you to continue that. So. There are, I think there are many virtual meetups that product by women are having every week. So you should join those and explore opportunities for yourself, not just for moving jobs, but also to get perspective of what others in your industry are doing. What are their career paths? What activities are they getting involved in and get ideas from there on what you want to do. Fantastic. Okay. We have a bunch of questions pouring in. So this is great. Uh, so, you know, can you talk a little bit about what you aspire in your next transition? You know, you spoke about leadership, you spoke about, you know, men, uh, networking. Uh, so can you, what's next for you? For me, so I have dabbled in everything from, as I said, product management, business analysis, consulting, strategy, and mm -hmm. all over the globe. But I think I'm ready to move on to more leadership roles now where I can work and uh, mentor larger teams. So this is something I'm consciously trying to move into and I have started taking additional responsibilities at work, talked about it at my work with my mentors uh, and I'm learning to how to grow into these roles within my current organization. Awesome. Um, and can you talk a little bit about the difference between a business analyst and scrum master role uh, as most of the times uh, different companies combine them? Um, I can be wrong, uh, but just looking at some thoughts about it. No, absolutely. So I think that's not the best way to go about it, but a lot, I agree that a lot of companies do that. Um, if anything, I think the business analyst could be mapped into a product owner role because they do talk to, um, they do talk to business, understand the, the needs of the product and define the, the vision and strategy and what features to be picked up next. So it could be mapped to that. Uh, of course, in many organizations, um, and I, if this is in my personal experience as well, you do perform the role of a scrum master as well. Um, I, I don't think that's the best fit though. Awesome. Yeah, that's for sure. I mean, I know in my organization, uh, the business analyst does sometimes put on that hat of uh, making sure the processes are, in, are streamlined and as a scrum master. So yeah, it, it is quite common for that to happen. Um, so just to add on that, um, can for, to, so I have done Scrum Master roles. Um, I have certifications on that. So I, you can do it. But what I would say is then then you have a different team of business analysts. So I, I would I would be uh, I don't think it's a good idea to make this business analyst is doing business analysis work and also doing Scrum Master work. Makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and how important do you think uh, domain experience is uh, in the business analysis space? So for instance, if you're trying to move jobs, um, you think it's important to stay within a certain industry? Um, so it's, this is a tricky question. I, I think it's much easier if you stay in the same domain. Uh, however, because as I said, you do need to have a, some sort of proficiency of understanding how the business uh, of your company is, uh, is being done. However, uh, I have moved domains and um, it may be difficult in the beginning. Uh, I, I have moved from uh, manufacturing, finance to insurance, everything. So it does take time to kind of move on to a different domain and understand the whole industry aspect of it. Uh, but it's not something that is not doable. Uh, after certain um, experience that you gain, you will eventually understand the whole, uh, whole industry that you're working in. Um, but my suggestion would be if you are trying to start this off new, uh, it's much easier if you're starting in a, a domain that you already are familiar with. Awesome. Thank you. And can you elaborate a little bit about like typical activities? Like what is a day in the life of for a business analyst? Like what, what does it really look like from nine to five? Okay. So I think that depends on the day, <clears throat> but a lot of time is spent in collaborating coordinating and understanding ideas from different cross-functional teams. So you could be interacting from your SMEs to the marketing teams, legal teams, user experience teams, engineers, you name it. So 
depending on what stage your project is at, you could be either doing requirement gathering, elicitation, maybe you're conducting user interviews or building uh, user journeys. You mm -hmm. could be writing stories, um, backlog pr prioritization, uh, refinement of uh, refinement of backlog. With in some cases, also where there are no dedicated QA teams, VAs sometimes perform a dual role and help building test strategies and support testing products, user acceptance testing. So there's really a long list of activities you could be working out of. Awesome. And in terms of the structure itself, right? Uh, how does a business analyst work with a product manager? Um, and you know, what does the stakeholder management really look like? And what would you say, you know, um, somebody asked a question here about, would you consider a business analyst junior to a product manager? So that's a very interesting question to me. So I, I want to try and understand what you think. No, that's a that's an interesting question. Uh, I think a lot of people would think that way. I I do not think that way. Uh, I have I have taken on the roles of a product manager myself and a business analyst. I don't think there's a, um, a seniority juniority level there. It's a very collaborative role. Also, as I mentioned, it, the difference is just the perspective where the product manager has the outward perspective where they are probably looking at it from the market perspective of what your product should be and giving you that input. And if you are a business analyst, you're taking that input and understanding the requirement and understanding the strategy and vision and getting the work done uh, from the um, team of engineers that you have. So the roles are quite, the perspective is different, but uh, overall, everybody's goal is to build a, a successful product. And do you think it's important for a VA to come from a technical background? I know you come from a software engineering background. Do you think it's necessary for somebody to come from? I don't think it's necessary. If you, if I'm being honest, yes, it does give you a uh, advantage uh, because uh, once I have defined the uh, requirement, I now know for building my solution, I can leverage my technology background and it's easier for me to talk to engineers and get the solution implemented. Mm -hmm. However, I don't think this is something that people who don't have this background cannot learn um, with work experience. So um, I don't think technology background is essential. Like you don't have to have an engineering degree or um, to, for that. You just need basic logical skills and a basic understanding of technology. And I think most important is people skills because it's this is this is analysis of very collaborative role. So you have to talk to so many people. You have to talk to different teams who you probably don't understand. So marketing team, I don't understand about marketing. Legal team, I'm not a lawyer. I don't, I don't understand legal, but you do talk to them. You have to kind of understand their uh, inputs and put, push it into the product's uh, vision. So I think people skills and logical aptitude is important. And I think that's for any role, honestly. So you don't have to be a BA role. These, these skills are uh, useful wherever you go. Agreed. Yeah. And what would you say is the key difference between a product manager and a product owner? It's quite confusing at times. Yeah, it is a confusing terminology. I can explain this. So product owner is a role you play on the scrum team. So this can be played by a BA also, as we talked about it. Uh, product manager is the job title in the organization. So if you take away scrum framework from your organization, you can still be the product manager. So product management and Scrum work well together, but product management is not dependent on Scrum. Interesting. And from all your roles that you've you know, had so far, which has been the most fun, and, um, and somebody asks here, uh, was working as a software engineer uh, at Accenture fun? Just curious. Absolutely, it was fun. Uh, I, I, as I said, programming is fun. And I think that has given me the understanding that I love technology. I want to be closer. I, mean, I, I want to be in touch with it. So um, that's why I guess I am working in a technology consulting company. So um, um, working as a software engineer was definitely fun. And it, it also gives me the perspective. So when today I talk to my engineering teams, I do understand their perspective also. So um, I feel like people who are from business background, sometimes they don't understand the engineer's perspective. So I feel like I, I do have that um, um, to, uh, perspective to understand them. So that helps me. And I think, sorry, what was your question? That um, which, which one was the most fun one? Was yeah. That yeah, like, what do you think from all your experience? What, what, where have you had the most amount of fun and maybe why? I think in Europe was the most fun for me <laughs> because I was, I was young. I, I, that was my first experience outside of my uh, home country. 
and um, yeah, I mean, um, it, it was my first full fledged business analyst role also. So everything was brand new for me. So that that was the most interesting time, I would say. You know, I want to switch gears a little bit, Meghna, and talk to you a little bit about the current situation about, you know, with COVID happening and stuff. How are you currently working with your teams? Because uh, your role is so collaborative, right? Like how, how are you, thinking, what are some tools you, you use? How do you, uh, you know, connect with your team? How do you, you know, how do you get work done? How do you move the needle? I know. Uh, I mean, I think things have changed, as we all know. Um, this is the new uh, way of living. Uh, so we are uh, doing all video calls the way we are talking right now on Zoom and Microsoft Teams. And um, it, I mean, just video conferencing and talking to each other and having as many calls and um, uh, during the day to make sure you are in the same line uh, with your colleagues, meetings which were in person. And I used to travel a lot before um, for, for going to my client um, uh, locations and workshops and doing requirement gathering sessions. So I used to fly all over. Now all that is gone. So I think the, the customers and clients have also started understanding that. Uh, I mean, obviously that right now there is no option also, but they have also started understanding that this can work, the virtual um, aspect of it, uh, where you are trying to um, talk to them the way I'm talking to you right now, absolutely works. At the same time, I do think the, I, I don't know, this is a debatable topic. I want to know how everybody feels about this. Um, I feel my productivity has definitely gone up. I feel like I am working much more than I used to before. There is no start or end uh, time of the day. It's yeah. Big, one big block of time. So, yeah. So I wonder what you guys think, how you are coping up with it. Absolutely. It's sometimes overwhelming. You're absolutely right. I feel like I wake up in the morning, I'm working, I'm working at odd hours, so there's no real time. Uh, yeah. uh, it's just, it's all just uh, blurred out right now. Um, and I think, uh, you know, one question, somebody like, what are some advice you'd like to give BAs uh, who are in their early career? Like any words of wisdom? Oh, okay. Um, I think just try, I would say like kind of try to understand uh, the customer's perspective of, so the example that I gave, right? Um, you don't have to always think that the customer is saying, I want this thing and that's the right answer. You should dig deeper into it. And um, a lot of times I feel clients give solution. They say, I want this. What a BA should do is why do you want? You kind of have to dig deeper into that and try to see, is that, is that what they really need? And uh, that makes a very good uh, BA where they don't just take instructions and um, uh, just go with whatever is said, I want X, Y, Z, and you just go with it. I would say, try to understand why this is needed. That makes a really good BA. Awesome. And where do you see the future of business analysis? Like where, like, you know, with, Pre-COVID, post-COVID, what do you think is going to happen? So post-COVID, I think this is, um, I mean, right, even right now we are seeing this, everything is virtual and I, I don't think there is any impact that we are seeing right now because uh, you can do these collaboration sessions over um, virtual way we are doing right now. Um, if you're talking about really further in the future, I think the future is there where the focus would be more on user experience and data analytics by leveraging big data tools like Tableau and uh, visualization software. So I think as things keep getting advanced over the years, um, I feel like a lot more usage of automated tools and AI uh, where the business analyst can leverage the recommendations AI provides uh, for process improvements or which feature will deliver the maximum business value or which fix should be prioritized first that will resolve the most pressing problem. So, so the BA role could evolve to be a more decision-making role, re leveraging all the automated tools that they will have um, at their disposal in the future. Awesome. Um, so we have a question here, which is interesting again. As a software engineer and a business analyst, do you see the software engineering decreasing in the US as this is something that can easily be outsourced to limit due to security. Can you say that again? Which part of the outsourcing? Uh, software engineering. Do you feel like the trend, you know, the current trends will, uh, you know, see a shift in the way uh, things work? So offshoring happens even today, right? Um, we have software engineers in India and Serbia and all other countries um, where it's offshored. Um, if the question is, it will be, is it going to be offshored more? 
I don't think so. I right now I am working with a team of um, engineers and soft software folks who are based out of here, and I think their uh, contribution here is extremely important. So um, unless it's, I think it depends on the individual if or the role that is needed. So if it is something that can be easily done without um, collaboration and without being uh, in physical uh, contact and just at the same time zone and everything, it could be offshore. But I do think people who are here right now, um, I, I don't think they have a, a disadvantage right now being sent back or something. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think, um, you know, if uh, the person has some more insights into the question, maybe we can dig more later. But uh, yeah, I agree with you. Um, so, you know, let's talk a little bit more about the skills itself for a business analyst. W what would you say are the top five, you know, or like in general, what are some technical skills, most important technical skills and soft skills required for a business analyst to excel at their role? Uh, so soft skills, I, I, I mean, just good communication is very important. Um, raising things at the right time, escalating things at the right time, and um, just generally understanding what your customer needs, that's important. Um, then for technical skills, I think data skills is important. Um, again, basic foundational data skills. Um, other than that, I think if you're asking tools, what the they need to, Visio is the biggest one. Everybody uses that. So Microsoft Visio, Excel, Word, these are these are important ones that get used often. Um, yeah, I, I think those would be the uh, ones. Uh, great, great, thank you so much. You know, as there's so much of ambiguity around the business analyst uh, roles and titles, how does it make one, make? how does one make sure that they're, they're applying to the right roles, you know? Uh, oftentimes, uh, you know, the role itself, like you see, you dabbed, uh, dabbled a little bit about, about this during your presentation itself. Like, how does one make sure they're applying to the right role? Right. Now, this is a good question. I would say when you apply for jobs, uh, go through the job description in detail so, to see what the focus of the role is. Is it customer or market, market facing? Or is it a data centric role where they have just used the broad categorization of the term business analyst in their job description, but actually means something else. So going through the job description in detail is important. Also during interviews, this would be a good time where I would recommend asking questions and clarifying again about um, this to make sure everybody's expectations are clear from the beginning. And it is a role that you're interested in and have the skills to actually be successful at. Awesome. Thank you so much. And, you know, I, I really want to also try and understand a little bit about like, can you share some, you know, obstacles you often face at, uh, you know, workplace being a business analyst? Like what are some challenges you face on a day to day basis, you know, and can you, can you kind of highlight that? Absolutely. So um, the obstacles would be where I think the customer <laughs> thinks that they know already what they need, as I mentioned. So you have to kind of explain them in a nice way where you want to understand their journey, understand their pain points and uh, explain to them that, hey, see, this is not what is actually needed for you. Mm -hmm. uh, at the same time, uh, some of the obstacles would be that um, business wants something and maybe the technology cannot probably, um, it cannot happen. What, what is need, what is asked and what is, uh, what can be done is not really a viable solution. Right. So that's where the BA's role is important because this BA is doing the bridging between the two, you know, like business and technology. So you are doing the bridging between two parts of the company that don't really understand each other very well. So mm -hmm. those are the challenges that uh, a BA would face. Again, um, also when you, uh, a lot of times BAs would travel uh, to the client locations and try to understand. So it could be that it's a different work culture. Uh, so I, as I said, I'm from a consulting background. So I not just my own company, I see so many other client companies that I work for and their organization and their work culture could be completely different. Their organization, how their, their hierarchy is completely different. So to understand that along with what you're doing is also uh, um, something that you need to look into. 
Awesome. And, and you know, as I, I'm assuming, one of the key skills that are required as a BA is good negotiation skills, you know? Yes, yes. Um, it's so imperative and it's so important uh, to have great negotiation skills. So when, so let's say if, if a product manager comes to you and they ask for the most observed feature uh, and it's really not possible uh, at that point of time, how, how, what is the best way to kind of, you know, um, uh, like, how do you work with this entire situation? Like, you know, I, I know that there have been times where, you know, I've gone to a business analyst and said that, uh, let's get this, this feature done. And I've gotten a no. Uh, so how, how, how is that decision really made? Uh, so I think you have to establish yourself as a person who, so suppose you're a BA and you are the PM, I, I need to have a good relationship with you. And I, you need to see me in a way that you know that I'm looking out for the best of for the product. So um, you need to trust when I say that, hey, this is not possible. Um, so building that relationship is important. If you don't have a relationship, which is sometimes not possible with everybody, I would say data points to show what you're saying. So if, if something is not possible, you have to kind of show the reasoning behind it and uh, you know show, show data points that, okay, X, Y, Z reason, this cannot be taken forward. Awesome. Yeah, no, absolutely. That's always very useful in kind of trying to build a case uh, and negotiating with anyone about the roadmap or anything else that you're kind of trying to build out. So thank you for that. And, you know, you, you spoke a little bit about leadership. Uh, have you yourself, like, do you have le like mentors who you work with and, you know, who coach you? And do you kind of uh, want, would you like to share like how you've gone about finding mentors and, uh, and do you recommend that for women in their early career? No, absolutely. Having mentors is extremely important. Um, uh, you, you need to have a couple of them um, and you should build those relationships over the time in your career. In fact, the presentation that I'm showing in front of you is also discussed with one of my mentors. So whenever you want to um, talk, when you, whenever you want to move, move jobs, or even whenever you're facing something, you should have that group of people who you can, you know, bounce off your ideas and uh, people who have done that before you. Uh, it's very important. So as I said, I think Products by Women has this networking um, mentor mentee program. So join those, I would say, um, join uh, programs where people can, even women groups like this, where we are, uh, people help each other out. So try to uh, find people who have had, uh, you want to aspire to be, or you know, they have had uh, career paths which are interesting to you and you think, yes, I can also do that. So reach out to people uh, who have done that and um, people help each other out. So yeah, that, that's how you kind of go ahead. Uh, so we have a question here. What type of staff is on a, B, a BA's team and are the junior BAs or mix of BAs and technical experts? Like that, so is there a split between someone who's more technical versus the other one? Um, or how, how does like a typical uh, structure of a BA team really look like? Right. So um, this is um, depending on the work that you're doing, of course. Um, so if it's a really big project, maybe you have uh, a really big team. And you have a team of business analysts, um, junior, mid-level, and senior business analysts, and maybe the senior person is managing all of them. Um, so, um, so the question was, uh, can you repeat the question again? Sorry. Yeah. What type of uh, staff is on a BA team? Are they uh, are they junior BAs or a mix of BAs and technical experts? So technical as experts are absolutely there in the team. If they not, they may not be reporting into you. Uh, but you do need technical experts to come up with a solution. So you may have a whole team of architects or programmers, senior programmers, and uh, the whole engineering team uh, to help you come up with the solution. So um, you absolutely need to have supporting roles to be able to succeed at this role. Absolutely. Awesome. Thank you. And I think we are at 7.55. So I do, I cannot let you go without asking you some questions uh, about how you unplug and spend time uh, in your downtime. So what do you do? What are you doing uh, lately? Because uh, we're all homebound. How are you unplugging? Um, I think just watching movies, running around the block as much as I can, trying to be safe. <laughs> and uh, cooking. Yeah, those are those are general activities just to, you know, spending time with family, uh, a lot of time with family. So uh, just trying to uh, see this in the positive light where um, 
I know the th things are not that easy right now, but trying to see the positive out of it. And any uh, book recommendations, resources for everyone who's joining us right now? Um, absolutely. Let me just see what I'm reading right now. One second. So I'm reading da Daring Greatly by Brené Brown. Um, so she, she, I don't know, she, she has a really famous TED talk, if you all have seen it. Um, talks about vulnerability and um, shame and things like that. So she's a, she's a vulnerability researcher. I really like her book. So um, yeah, so I'm listening to that right now. Awesome. And uh, yeah, I mean, that's, that's a great uh, point because, uh, and it's very important con uh, conversation to have about vulnerabilities, I think. Uh, somebody just mentioned here saying, uh, sorry, I missed the title of the book. So do you want to mention it again? Da Daring Greatly. Daring Greatly, Joe. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I mean, oftentimes we, um, you know, are trying, always trying to be very brave as women in specific. Uh, so I think it's, it's definitely something uh, I would put it on my re reading list as well. Um, well, I think it, that's the end of the, our session here. I feel like we've covered all the questions uh, and Thank you all. Thank in specific. Thank you so much, Meghna. This has been such an insightful session, and uh, you know, this we, we couldn't have done this without you. This is the first time we are hosting a BA session, and it's been a, a very very uh, interesting one. And I'm sure everybody who's joined us today will agree with me. Uh, again, uh, for everybody who's joined us today, we will be sharing a copy of uh, the event via email uh, and on Slack, and we'll be dropping it on Slack. And feel free to connect with um, Meghna afterwards on LinkedIn and, uh, and on um, Slack, and we'll, we'll share all the information. Thanks, Meghna. Do you, would you like to say something to everybody who joined us? Thank you so much for joining in. Let me know if you still have questions. We can talk about it. And um, I hope you stay safe and stay good. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> have a great Friday, guys. Bye-bye. See you.